and go ahead and do the closed captioning. Okay, now how let's go let's go and see how many of you are on my labs plus because I know we got like 15 in the class. I doubt very seriously all of you are on my labs plus. So let's go ahead and look it up and see. My labs math, whatever the hell it's called. Um, they call it something every every semester, they call it something different. Oh great. Now I gotta type in this. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. Y'all forgive me. Usually I have everything set up. Eight seven nine six seven three. Okay, here is Blackboard. Let me check one more thing. And I want y'all, if you have not gotten on My Labs Math yet, make sure that you're on Google Chrome. So if you are, if you have a, hopefully all of you have Chromebooks, make sure that you, um, hold on just a second. And make sure that you're on Google Chrome and get on your Blackboard. And y'all are Tuesday, Thursday, eight o'clock. And let's see how many of y'all are on. Wow, y'all are already on. I'm very impressed. There's like 16 in the class and 13 are on. So I'm very, very impressed. Usually there's only like two. So, but we're going to talk about it nevertheless today because some of you have never seen it before. So those two or three students that have not signed up yet, find your course on Blackboard, which is right here. Math 12038. There you are and click on that over here on the left hand side it says side it says my labs math click on that and my labs math it's going to ask you to read the policies and accept the policies go ahead and do that go down to the class right there Click on the green button. Click on the green button that says launch. And the yellow orange button that says open. And that should be it. Anybody have any troubles? Okay, now that should jump the uh, people up to, let's see if that jumps that. So hopefully some of y'all was 13. Let's see how many there are now, still 13. So I've showed you how to do it. I don't know, I don't know, okay, whatever. So the three people must not have done it. Anyway. I'm going to give you this also. I'm going to send you this in the chat so you can put it on your computer. And I'll explain it after I send it to you. Please tell me you got, I just sent it. So please tell me, somebody nod and tell me you got it. Yes or no? Okay. Now save that or put it as a desktop in your computer. 
that is the website for Pearson, where you can log in and not have to go through Blackboard. Does anybody know why I'm giving you this website? Anybody want to take a guess? Yeah, y'all settle down, please. Because Blackboard will crash whenever you need to turn something in. So you need to have a back, back door or a plan B, and that is your plan B. I would highly suggest that you save this on your desktop and use it because it's a whole lot easier to get to Pearson but then having to go through Blackboard. Capiche? Everybody understand? Okay. This really sucks, y'all not being able to talk. I mean, it really sucks. And y'all not want to talk, one of the two. And then one of you open your microphone and it starts ringing. So anyway, here is your, uh, your menu. There's three buttons that I want you to write down. And that means I want everybody to write this down, even the guys that know everything. I want everybody to write this down. Down here it says e-text contents. E-text means your book. So if you want to, if you want to read the book online, then you will hit e-text. And since I've given you chapter one and two to read, you would hit e-text, and then you would hit, you could hit the uh, table of contents, or you could just go to chapter one, data collection, and click on 1.1, and hit the e-text, and there is your book. Okay, you can print out the book page by page by hitting the three dots and print. Some people, and these are students that usually make A's, they print out the book by the outline you know, section 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and then they put it in a notebook and they keep it for m more classes later on down the road. But that's for the people that make A's and B's and actually care about later on, okay? Because there are some math science courses at Clemson that come after this course and it's very beneficial if you have those notebooks, okay? All right, next. The next thing that you need to worry about is the student grade book. Now, I know that most of y'all are sitting there going, I can't believe he's having to explain the grade book. Yes, to college students, I have to explain the grade book. Now, I know some of y'all probably are like, well, that's where you that's where your grade is. Yep. But some college students, I have to explain that to them. So you click on that and it will show you your grade that you have in my lab's math. I do everything in my lab's math, your homework, your test, your exam. So everything you do is in my lab's math. Everything is graded in my lab's math. So when you click on overall grade, which is in this circle, that's your grade. Calculations, now I've got to change this to 20% and 80%, but I'll change that later. This shows your calculation. So you will be able to see where you need to, you know, go back in and do some more homework, or you need to redo a test, whatever the case may be. And that leads us to the last button, assignments. That's where you find all your homework and all your tests. And there's your homework on chapter one and two, which you should be reading now. OK? 
Okay. Now I'm going to show you the most important part of my lab's map. And that is the help buttons. These buttons down here. Now this is where I want you to write down the information because I want you to see what kind of learning style you are. Learning styles are how we learn. Some of us are visual learners. Some of us are oral learners. Some of us are auditorial, auditorial or reading. Some of us, you know, just like to see somebody do it. All right. Help me solve this. Write this down is a guided tutorial. What is a guided tutorial? Write this down. A guided tutorial is ex explanation with questions. A guided tutorial is an explanation with questions. So if I am your tutor and I tell you that I'm going to explain a problem to you and I ask you a couple of questions while I'm explaining it, then that means I'm giving you a guided tutorial. I'm asking you questions as I, you know, explain it to you. What is view an example? View an example, write down this is three words. Show or show four words. Show me how to do it. Five words. I don't know. Show me how to do it. Five words. Show me how to do it. Who uses help me solve this? Somebody that's never seen the material. How many of you have never had probability and statistics before? Okay. Some of you may hit help me solve this because you've never seen it, while others know everything. Okay, there's some of y'all that think y'all know everything and y'all don't, but some some of you do. That would be view an example. View an example or for those people that have seen it before but can't remember it and get more help sometimes you might see a video sometimes you'll see textbook and sometimes you'll see graphic write this down graphic tutorial when you see a graphic tutorial or a video that means visual When you see textbook, that means that it will take you, I'll hit it right quick, and it will take you to the textbook, the page that shows you about bar graphs. Okay. Now, what about this guy? Ask my instructor. I want you to highlight that. I want you to write down, ask my instructor, and I want you to highlight it. Because after you have gone through, help me solve this, view an example, video, tutorial, textbook, and you still don't know how to do the problem, that's when you send it to me. I'm going to say that one more time so everybody will understand that. After you have gone through, help me solve this, and you've gone through and you, you don't understand it, and you say, well, I don't know how to do that. And then you go through, view an example, and you still don't know what's going on. Then ask my instructor. It will send it to me, please. Do this problem in class. I, I, I intentionally misspelled all those words for a reason. Send. And then the next day, 
or the next day we meet, which would be Tuesday, I will go into my, hold on a second. Well, I guess I need to go into TCTC again. Hold on a second, I'm used to having this in my laptop. TCTC.edu. I will go into my, and this, I do this every class. I have folders for y'all. And I will go into my email. Down here, y'all are 120. And it's going to junk email right now. And there is the question that I sent myself because there is the please do this problem in class. Miss Spell. Now, for those people that need help, see somebody already sent me a question from um, from the college trig class. So I just move it over to Math 111. Okay. Now, why is this? Can somebody, let me ask somebody to talk to me. Miss Ferguson, do you, can you unmute your mic for me, please? And turn it down a little bit. Okay. Why do you think Ask My Instructor is so important? What is important? Huh? I said, why do you think the Ask My Instructor button is so important? So you, you can ask me it, okay, turn your mic off, please. Um, it actually gauges the class. What do I mean by gauge the class? It either slows the class up, I mean slows the class down, or it speeds the class up. Let me explain to you how things are supposed to work in here. You have a word okay. Now. now again, I'm talking to 90% of you because 10% of you already know how I teach and you ain't never met me before. All right, so 90% of you will do the homework right after I go over the material. So if I go over 2.1, then you work on that homework for 2.1. If I go over 2.2, you work on that homework for 2.2. And by the next time we meet, you should either have done all the homework for 2.1 or 2.2, or you should have 80% of it with the questions sent to me that you don't understand. Everybody with me? That's the two scenarios. But the third scenario is the one that messes the class up, and that's the student that puts off the homework until I get to 2.5. And if you do that, and then we're in 2.5 and you send me a question on 2.1, am I gonna do that question? No, you're gonna have to do that with me virtual office hours outside of class, okay? Procrastinators are not gonna hold up this class. So for the 10% that's gonna do your own thing, just be wary that when you send me a question out of sequence, you're gonna to have to do it outside of class. Capiche? Okay, because I know what one of you will do. You'll say that I'm not going over your questions when you send it to me. No, that's that's not right. You, 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 that's not valid. You waited, you made the decision to put off homework until the last section and you're trying to send me a 2.1 question while we're in 2.5. That's not the way this class works. Okay, procrastinators hate my class. They really do hate my class because it shows, it shows their true colors, all right? So with that being said, who's got now, I got another thing to say, right now, I have given y'all a kind of a big area to go over with chapter one and chapter two. I will cover chapter one and chapter two probably maybe starting today, okay? Because we're running out of 
first and second day material, so I've got to start actually teaching. All right. So if I cover 1.1 today, then you are responsible for that homework. If I cover 1.1 and 1.2, then you are responsible for that homework. Whatever I cover in class, whatever I teach in class, you are responsible for that homework before we meet or questions sent before we meet the next day. Does everybody understand that? Right now, it's time perfect. Y'all have four days to do chapter one and chapter two, and I'm gonna to start today, but everybody should have chapter one and chapter two read by Tuesday. Everybody should have it read, and you should have at least three quarters of the homework done because it's definitions, uh, word problems, there's not any math involved but I will still go over it, okay? Who's got questions so far? Anybody got a question? Just type it. If you have a question or concern, just type it in the chat until we get these ear pods. We don't have to get ear pods because y'all sitting in the same room and being in a circle, that's not gonna work, okay? Or being close to each other with the speakers up, that's not gonna work. Okay, so we're going to have to type messages in the chat if you need to ask a question. Anybody? Anybody got a question? Nobody has a question. Okay. All right, well, let me look at the test. I want to show you a test. Let me go and show you what the test looks like. Let me go into my courses. Yeah, 120.38. Instructor Tools, Assignment Manager. I don't know if I can import. I don't know. This is a new book. I probably cannot. No, I can't. Well, I was hoping I could. Let me try one more thing. From my courses. There we go. We can try this just so you can just so you can see what it looks like. Yes. There we go. Unit one test. Import. Okay, whatever. And let's assign that for today. And what time is it right now? It is, let's see, this is January, August, what, 26th? And it is 8.38, I'll do 8.37. And we'll make it 8.26. And we'll shut it off at, what time is class over? 11 or 9.35? 9.25, hell, I don't know, 25 a.m., there we go, 9.25, sorry, and save. Okay, so here is the test, so we go to assignments. And didn't show up. Why didn't it show up? Crap. Hold on a second.
I must not have put the right time in. 8.37 a.m. as it is today, not the 26th. Is today the 26th? It looks like it, yep. And 8.37. Okay, evidently I didn't. Hold on. Assignments. All chapters. Okay, I don't know why it's not showing up, but I'll go through and show it to you. I'm just not going to fool with it. I'll just show it to you. I can do that. And preview. All right, now be careful. You might want to. You might want to make a note of this because this is actually what your test is going to look like. All right, and I put bonus questions on your test, and those bonus questions are some of the questions that y'all asked me throughout the semester. And some of them are some of the DA questions that's been asked after grade turn-in. So, although covered in the handouts in the first day of class, what is the best way to communicate? Well, now it's Teams, but it's usually his cell phone, but now it's Teams. Okay, so that's a pretty simple question even though somebody will miss it. And I bet they took off all the math questions and just gave me the bonus questions. Uh, why does Hubert not entertain extra points at the end of the semester? Because he awards me these type questions on each test and he lets me take the test three times and takes the highest grade. Okay. Oh, uh, my website said it was 737. Okay, thank you. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Yeah, these they've taken off all the math questions, so I'm sorry. If a student does not complete a homework assignment, what grade will be recorded for that assignment? This is for the deadhead that showed up after grade turning in with his helicopter parents and said, Oh, uh, I didn't know that uh, I got a zero. I didn't know my grade would shut up. Okay. You, you telling me you went through 12 years of school and you didn't know that you got a zero when you didn't turn in a test? Yeah, dumbass. Next, when does the homework terminate? Toward the end of the what? Toward the end of the unit. Which branch of military service did Hubert serve? If you put the Army, I will automatically fail you for the semester. Okay? There's a math question. Actually, that question comes out of Chapter 3. So you see a math question there. There's a, oh, there's here's one that y'all have been reading about qualitative or quantitative your favorite musical band that would have to be Guns N' Roses have to be all right Guns N' Roses or the Eagles maybe Leonard Skinner okay so my that that's qualitative that's not quantitative I can't take the average of bands what's the average band you can't do that so that's qualitative. Okay, so it says qualitative. So it's not it's not Charlie. I'm sorry. It's not Delta, and it's not Bravo. It's either Alpha or Charlie. Okay, so I believe it's Alpha because it is an attribute characteristic. So it's Alpha. It's qualitative. Scores of an IQ test. This is chapter three. If you take several forms of a test in Hubert's class, how is it counted? He takes the highest grade. Oh, I didn't know. The population, this is a chapter three question. Does Hubert replace your lowest test grade with your final exam grade? Oh, this is classic. 
I had a guy notice it. Have y'all noticed that most of these are guys? I had a guy that came up to me after grade turn in with his bulldozer mom. And you didn't tell my son that. You didn't tell my son that. You didn't tell my son that. And then I showed them my test questions. And I said, this test question, thank you. I said, this test question was on all four of your son's unit test. I said it was also given to him the first week of class and the second to the last week of class in which he did not attend because I have the attendance records. Oh, that's all? That's all you're gonna say, oh? Instead of I'm sorry that we've wasted your time because my, my son is a deadhead? Anyway. Does Hubert replace your lowest grade with your final exam grade? No way, no how. Hubie don't give trophies to everybody. If you don't do the work, you get a zero. You get a lot of zeros, you fail the class. You fail, you're a failure in this class. So bring, go ahead and bring Bulldozer Mom and helicopter dad, bring them. I've got so much recorded and so much on documentation. I don't think you want to do that. And plus, I treat people fair. I don't try to set you up. Now, if you want to disrespect me and you want to play like you do with all your other instructors, then we can have a bad semester. But we are a product of our own decisions. That's your decision, not mine. Next. If you have incomplete assignments and Hubert puts a zero in for the grade, what will that zero do to your grade? I don't know. Number of cars in a stadium, is that discrete or continuous? It's discrete because you're counting. That's chapter one. There's uh this is Z scores, that's chapter three. Which some of y'all invented Z scores, so how is the homework calculated? This is the number one most missed question in my bonus questions. I want somebody to explain to me how you can miss this question. Why is 30, 30, 30 not the answer? You just put it in the, just put it in the chat. Why is 30, 30, 30 not the answer? That's a pretty kitty cat, Miss Boer. You can, you can show your kitty cat if you want to. I just don't want to see no damn dogs. 30, 30, 30. Oh, pretty kitty cat. I got four. I want an ocelot or one of them big main coon. I want one of them. I want one of them. I want a daggum tiger. Somebody, it doesn't add up. Miss Newsom, you are you are gifted. Okay? You are gifted because there are some people that don't know that when you give weights of a grade, it's supposed to equal what? 100. Some of these people have driver's license and they are going to procreate. That miss these questions. It's sad. It's really Tide Pod, really deep Tide Pod stuff. Oh, I love y'all's new challenge now to walk on milk crates that are 15 feet in the air. And then y'all wonder why people don't take your generation seriously. Next, y'all want to start a revolution. Hell, y'all can't even start a lawnmower. Y'all climbing on milk crates 
15 feet in the air. If you look at your overall grade one day and it has decreased from several days ago, what has happened? A zero has been placed for a missed assignment or you clicked on the wrong selection. What should a student do if something happens and they are out of class for a while? All right, somebody type in where you work. Somebody type in the uh, the uh, chat where you work, if you got a job. If you ain't got no dang job, you don't type in anything. Somebody type in where you have a part-time job. Anybody? Okay, nobody works. Palmetto Moonshine, right? I thought they closed up. Is that Moonshine or is that Moon something else? Because I'm familiar with the Palmetto Moonshine. It's they closed. Just moon. they... What? It's just Moon. Okay, what do they do there? It's like a clothing store. Okay, just type it in. I can't. I can't hear you. Oh, it's a clothing store. Okay, Miss Bridwell. Let's say you won a let's say you won a trip to Panama City, all expenses paid, and you took off and went down there and didn't tell your employer. What would happen when you got back? Just type it in. You get fired. You would get fired. Okay. I'm the employer. If you have this came from a this came from a deadhead with the helicopter mom or dad, I can't remember. Showed up, department head, he had a he had a A. He missed the third test. Not the fourth test, he missed the third test. Now, the reason I'm telling you he missed the third test is because he had another week and a half to tell me that he went on a cruise, but he didn't tell me. He just missed the, missed the third test, didn't tell me why, didn't say nothing, and then he had a C for a grade. Here comes helicopter dad. And I showed him this test question. I said, that's four times. Communicate with me. Well, what if I can't? What if I got run over by a truck? Well, what would, what would happen if you got run over by a truck? Wouldn't your mom and your dad or your guardian call somebody and let them know? I think they would. So that guardian or mom and dad should call Tri-County Tech also. And Tri-County Tech will get the word out to all the instructors. What do y'all think some of this is? Type in what you think some of this is. I mean, honestly, what, did, what these questions that I have as bonus questions, what are they? Type it in and tell me what you think. If your grade book to find your grade after you have completed all assignments, you should hit overall grade. Anybody want to type in what they think these questions are? Oh my gosh, Mr. Dickerson, what a concept. Here's a math question. You are correct. Common sense. Common sense, but you do realize that some students try to find a crack and they try to find a crack by saying, I don't know, or I didn't know. Well, you can't say I didn't know when you got four bonus questions on a test, on four different tests that tell you what I do and I don't do. There's a math question, that's chapter three. Here's the second, now, now get this now. Here is the second most missed bonus question. You with me? The second 
most missed bonus question. And I want somebody to really explain to me how you missed this question. I have no idea how you missed this question. All I got to say is I hope them Tide Pods are good because you must have been eating a lot of them. If you miss a question on a test and you believe it is correct, what do you do? Oh, this is this is a winner right here. Y'all, y'all just go crazy. This is what y'all do. C. Send several Hubert. Send several emails to Hubert. With the last one saying, hello. No, I'm not going to respond because I've told you, see me after class. After today, you know, you see me after class. <clears throat> and that's it. Now, why do I go through and show you these bonus questions? Because even if you're non-sentient, if you've eaten too many Tide Pods, you could still make, well, I did answer a few questions, math questions. You could still make a 60 on my test. I made a 76, and I didn't answer none. I didn't answer, well, granted, they took out a lot of math questions, okay? Usually, the bonus questions round out to about two or three points apiece. Everybody with me? There's about 10 to 12 bonus questions on a test. Everybody with me? So you're talking about 30 points. Everybody in this room, everybody that takes my test, you get those 30 points if you can answer all of them correctly. Yeah, I'm a bad person. Any questions on the test? Any questions? Type them in. Type them in the uh, type them in the uh, chat if you got a question. Any questions? Are y'all telling me that I have done so well in presenting this material that none of you have any questions whatsoever? That's a bunch of bull crap. Y'all just don't want to ask a question. That's what it is. How many of you have started reading chapter one and chapter two? Just raise your hand. Okay. It's not rocket science, okay? Some of y'all have already had probability and statistics, and some of you wrote the book, and some of you didn't take probability and statistics. So I'm gonna give everybody a whole weekend to get as much chapter one and chapter two homework done as you can. Now I'm gonna take a minute right here, and I'm gonna show you how I go through the homework on chapter one and chapter two. And since it's all definitions, I don't have to do much math. So I'm going to go to the e-text. And I'm going to go to chapter one. And I'm going to 1.1. And this is where we start. So technically, I'm starting to teach right now. So that means everybody needs to get their book notebooks out or your book and your highlighters or whatever. And we're going to go through and I'm going to show you how I cover chapter one and two. So where is something that's important? Right here. Chapter right there, statistics with a capital T. I meant, sorry with a capital S. Collection, calculation, and interpretation of data. That's it. Collection, interpretation, calculation, interpretation of data. 
Now I gave you the quick I gave you the quick definition. Collection, calculation, and interpretation of data. Now, make sure you highlight that capital S because I'm going to give you another definition in a few minutes of a lowercase s. So make sure you make a note that capital S means the collection, calculation, and interpretation of data. And this is how I go through definitions. I just tell you which ones are important and which ones aren't. You're welcome. A population. A population is always the big group. Population is always the big group. If I use a formula to figure something about the population, I'm going to use parameters, which are Greek variables, Greek symbols. If I use an equation to calculate something for the population, I'm going to use parameters, which are Greek letters. So if I do an equation and it has a Greek letter in it, that's for the population. Sample. Sample is the small group. Sample is the small group. If I do a calculation for the sample, I will use alphabetic letters called statistics, lowercase. If I use an equation for the sample, I will use alphabetic letters called statistics with a lowercase s. So, population, parameter, sample, lowercase statistic. And I'll explain that when I get into the math. Descriptive statistics, write that down. That's your standardized test question, ACT question. What is descriptive statistics? That's when you actually organize and calculate your statistics. Think of your test grades. That is descriptive statistics. Put an example, test grades. That is descriptive statistics. Inferential, I'm sorry, inferential. Inferential is where you use other people's math or other people's data and you predict. Inferential, you predict. If Mr. Hamby has a 62 test average, does that predict what his next test grade is going to be? No. But if he did inferential statistics, it would predict what his next test grade might be. So far, everything that I have covered is a possible test question. If I cover it, chances are it's going to be on the test. I've already given you parameter. Parameter goes with population. 
and a parameter is usually a Greek letter. Oh yeah, these are test questions. These are your standardized test questions right here. Qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative, blondes, brunettes, redheads. Equals characteristics. Blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes, characteristic. Quantitative data. Quantitative data means it has mathematical value. Age, average age in the classroom, that is quantitative data. The average shoe size of the class, that is quantitative data. The average weight or height of the class, that is quantitative data. Those are two test questions, and you just saw one of them on the test. So there's two test questions right there. Now you do see I'm skipping some things. I do skip stuff, but some things I don't skip. If I bring it up, it's gonna be on the test or possible to be on the test. Discrete and continuous, another test question. Oops, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Now I'm going to give you an easy, I'm going to give you an easy definition for discrete and continuous. Discrete is predictable and or locatable. And it has a pattern. I need you to put in parentheses, rational, close parentheses. So discrete is your rational numbers. Well, what is continuous? Continuous is not predictable, no pattern, non-locatable, and irrational. Let me give you an example of discrete. I'm going to give y'all a chance to catch up. How many eggs are in a dozen eggs? Twelve. Counting is discrete. Eggs, counting eggs, counting is discrete. Measuring is continuous. Measuring is continuous. If I ask you to go outside in the parking lot and count the number of vehicles in the parking lot, that would be discrete. If I asked you to measure a fire hydrant out in the parking lot, that would be continuous because half of you wouldn't be able to do that because you don't know how to read a ruler. It's sad, but it's true. Okay? Half graduates cannot read a ruler or a measuring tape. They just measure, oh, it's a... Uh, two feet, three inches, and I don't know what them little marks are. That's what most people would do, okay? So anytime you measure something, what is measured in real life? Somebody tell me in the chat, give me an idea of something that's measured. She can't get back in. Brianna Newsom, hold on. Let me call her in. 
Newsom, Brianna, it says she came back in. She's back in. Thank you. Okay, now where was I? Okay, somebody give me a def, uh, an example of something being measured. I want y'all to type them in because I want you to see what they have in common. Since we can't talk, I want you to type in something that's measured. There you go. What else? Something that's measured. That means I want y'all to actually communicate with me. I want y'all to participate. I want everybody to type in something that's measured. There we go. There you go. There you go. Food is measured. Yeah, it's measured. Yeah. Clothing. Yep. Yeah. You're right. Write down this. Continuous meters, liters, grams. Distance, weight or volume. You get it? Meters, liters, grams. Yes, it's measured. And tell me something that's counted. Days that you're absent. Give me something else that's counted. Your birthday is counted. Everybody get the difference? How about if I ask you to measure the height of a tree? Discrete or continuous? Just Is type it, it in. Yeah, do not, do not, no, don't do that, please, please. Continuous, good. That's a test question that half the people miss. I don't know why. Next. Oh, you got your calculator? Anybody got a calculator handy? Oh, come on. Y'all twirl them things around like a basketball on y'all's finger. Ask you what the square root of 25 is, you have to put it on a calculator. Come on, get the calculators out. Take the square root of two. I bet they haven't put the calculator on here, nope. Let me, let me see if I can pull in a calculator. Y'all see the calculator okay? All right, here we go. Two raised to the 0.5 power. I want somebody to tell me what that next digit is. Side that seven. What's the next digit? Anybody tell me? Give you a hundred dollar bill if you tell me the next digit. You can't. Why? There's no what. There's no what. Somebody type it in. There's no what. I need somebody to type it in before we move on. What do you not see? Pattern. So this is a what number? Discrete or continuous? There's no pattern, so this is what? Try this. I want somebody to say what it is, but don't turn on your mic. It might show up in the caption. It is continuous, but nobody said it, so I guess you have to I guess you have to do your mic for that. Okay, yes, I guess you would. I'm trying to figure out a way to communicate. All right, now to take one divided by three. Discrete or continuous?
Tell me what the next number is. Three. So it's discrete. That's all there is to it. I guarantee you, some of y'all didn't know what the difference between discrete and continuous was. Now you do. Give me another one. How about pi? Continuous or discrete? Tell me what that next number is behind that five. You can't. So what is pi? It is continuous. Piece of cake. All right, let's move on. Y'all learned something today, didn't you? All right. Okay, let's stop right there. And let's call it a day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the rolls. That is that and that. And let's.